Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Talking Sass. And you know what? I am so excited. The Montreal Canadiens are in the Stanley Cup playoffs and I cannot wait to see what happens in these playoffs. I know game one happened the other night. Not so good for the Montreal Canadiens. But I have faith that they're going to do outstanding the rest of the playoffs. That was just kind of a feeling out for the Canadians. At least I hope so. And you know what? Our guest today is just as cool as the ice. But before we get to my guest, I can't wait to tell you guys all about patreon.com slash sassy Steffi. Go there and starting at only $2, you guys are going to get lots of great content, including extras with every single one of my guests. So make sure you go check that out. You're going to get the podcast early. You're going to get to know who my guests are in advance as well, and potentially even ask some questions, and there's so many more exclusives coming. So make sure you guys go again. That's patreon.com slash Steffi. If you guys want to follow along on Twitter or Instagram, please do. It's at Sassy Steffi, and I have been tweeting all about the Habs during the playoffs. So if you're into hockey, you're definitely going to be into that. But also, I live tweet wrestling if I'm able to watch it that night and uh, it's just a good time so go and follow me okay and while you guys are in the productive mood make sure you guys go and hit that subscribe button either here on YouTube or on your favorite podcast platform and don't forget if you're watching on YouTube hit that little bell notification so you never miss a second of talking sass and also if you are on your favorite podcast platform don't forget to rate and review talking sass and please give me five stars now on to my cool as the ice guest. She is a former NXT live broadcaster and also backstage interviewer. She was a live host there for NXT before the pandemic happened, unfortunately. And live shows went away and it sucks. But she is back into the wrestling game and she has her own YouTube show that's called Let's Get Serial. And it's awesome. You guys should definitely check it out. And here she is. This is Alyssa. Marino. Hey, Alyssa, how are you doing? I am doing great. How are you? How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing quite swell. I am really excited to get to talk to you today because there are so many things I didn't know that I found out and I can't wait to like share some of this information with the world because I don't even know if they would know some of this information. I hope I know some of this information. This is going to be fun. (laughs) Well, let's start all the way back at the beginning, because I know when I was doing my research, you really watched wrestling with your great grandfather, I think it was when you were young, but then you kind of fell out of it. And when you were 16, you got back into it. What was it that drew you back in at that time? It was actually in 2016. Oh, okay. 2016. You weren't 16. You were in 2016. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, it was in 2016. It was a far okay. ways off from me being 16. But um, yeah, so it was, I watched when I was very, very little. And then I totally fell off the map and refound it because my, my roommate, when I moved to LA, was really into it and would watch it all the time. And I, it was actually funny. One of the first people whose theme music I heard, and mm-hmm. it just took me right away was Sami Zayn. I was oh, really, nice. I was really into ska in college. And then I heard his music. I'm like, is this, do I know this? Do I know this band? What band is this? What band? And I saw that it was wrestling and I was like, well, hang on. So I sat down and <laughs> ended up watching it and, it, and, and that's been it since then. It's funny that you say Sami Zayn. Cause when I moved to Canada, I'm originally from Ohio. When I moved to Canada, the city that I moved into is actually the city he is from like oh, his, okay some of my family is friends with his family and it's that whole, you know, small world thing. But I mean, obviously at that point he had gone on to bigger and better things. So he's not here very often to my knowledge, but, but that is, that is a great, great wrestling theme. I'm a, I was big into ska when I was probably in my early twenties. Yes. I went to, there was a concert place in Cleveland, Ohio called the Odeon and they always had like these punk bands like local punk bands and it always seemed to have like a local ska or two bands also played so at that point then I got into like real big fish and like suburban legends I'm trying to think but like the one that I really liked from Cleveland was Caddy Wampus I was like that's just a great word though exactly oh I love I was like I was hardcore (laughs) into it so 
It's got we good. had like we had one in Philly called the Argyles that I used to like a lot. Mm, that's a great name for a place too, the Argyle. Argyle. I like that. <laughs> so anyway, so you got back into it because yeah. you heard Sami Zayn's music, but how did it go from hearing Sami Zayn's music to progressing into your career? Because I mean, that's a short period of time. Because I mean less than four years, then you would have been signed to NXT. So how, how did those first four years go for you? In wild, wildly they went. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so, so from my, again, my roommate being really into it, getting me into it, we, uh, for his birthday actually did the Santino brothers one day intensive, mm -hmm. like, Oh, this will be fun. They do like a tryout where you can try out the wrestling course. And, you know, I went with them and it was, it was really intense. And this whole time we've been talking about, oh, well, if we're wrestlers, like we got to come up with characters. If we're wrestlers, we would just kind of like brainstorm these ideas. So I had this idea in mind of a, of a wrestler because I was, I was thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I'll wrestle. But one of my favorite things that I want, that I liked doing was, was promos. So I would like cut promos in the car on my way to work. And, and the character idea that I had was Kathy from Human Resources. Sources. It was this idea of like, oh, she's the death of fun and, and she, you know, no flying from the top rope. It was very much um, like channeling right to censor, but also Drew Gulak when he was doing his PowerPoint presentations and the no fly zone. So I was trying to like take a lot of those ideas and I also worked in human resources at the time. <laughs> I would take things that I would like hear in meetings and try and like, uh, like, oh, this uh and she had a Midwestern accent for some reason. I, I don't know why. I was like, oh, well, we cannot have this uh, kind of synergistic endeavoring. So like, it was just this annoying character that I wanted to be. Um, so we do the one day intensive. It's very, very strenuous, very, 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 yeah. um, with, you know, the bumps and the rolls and everything like that. But then we get to the end where we get to cut a promo. And that was where I was like, oh yeah, this is, I like this part. This is the part I like the most. <laughs> uh, so Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy ended up doing that year, a, uh, their first ever manager class, where they're like, well, we're going to train managers, commentators, ring announcers, referees, production, everyone that isn't an actual wrestler in the ring. I ended up doing that class and, and that was just kind of where, where it all started. I think before that class ended, I had started doing uh, backstage interviews at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Uh, right after that class ended, I got my first commentary opportunity and, and it just kind of went from there. The more that I did it, because I just wanted to kind of get reps and I wanted to learn as I went. Mm -hmm. um, and the more opportunities that I took, the more that would just kind of present themselves. So it, it, that's, that's just kind of how it happened. <laughs> I mean, it is wild to think about that because I mean, that's such a small area of time. Like I remember when I start, let's say from my very first match to four years later, like I was nowhere near even trying to think about, you know, sending anything to WWE at that time. But then again, you know, I, I did a small little town in Ohio, you know, there was Madison rain came out of the same school I did. So I can't say like it was a you know, no, it was a great school. It was just, you know, I took my time and kind of developed it. Whereas it sounds like you just kind of blossomed right away. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, I know like the scene in California is way different than the East coast, but I feel like those people that really are going to blossom really like grow quickly in the LA San Francisco area for some reason. It's wild. Cause I think, and we, we, sadly joke about this, that California and the West coast is kind of like a little Island and it's, there's so much great talent out there mm -hmm. that just whether it's the travel aspect or, you know, how much it is to run a traveling show through the West coast, they just, it, it, they don't get out there as much as they yeah. should. I'm starting to see more of it now, which makes me really, really happy to see some West coast talent all over the place. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it, it was a little bit, uh, isolated for, for a while, mm -hmm. but there's some really gems, gems out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, even now you have impact that's based in Nashville, you have WWE, of course, in Stanford and also in Orlando, you have AEW in the Tampa area. I mean, it's like, everything's pretty much East coast. You have even ring of honor, 
wherever, you know, they're either based in Philly or in Baltimore, depending on the year, I think. So, I mean, everything is based on the East coast. And I love like when I used to go to California and stuff like that and wrestle and like get to see all these brand new people I had never heard of before. And I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. I mean, obviously some of the promotions, they do get a lot more uh, like national exposure. I would say like the PWG and, and stuff like that. Like people know those promotions, but there's people that don't work within those promotions that are just like, like you said, basically these gems. Yeah. 100%. And and like I said, I'm glad to start seeing more of them kind of getting around a little bit more uh, because they're it's there's incredible talent out there. And where are you based now? Because I remember when we were talking, we were talking about, oh, are you in this uh, time zone and this time zone? (laughs) I, I still function sometimes with the West Coast mentality, like the West Coast time zone in mind, because I'm like, okay, and it's at, at three, two, one, twelve. At twelve o'clock, I'll do. Yeah, no, I'm still in Orlando, so okay. I'm I am on East Coast time now. But, uh, but yeah, I always <laughs> like to always like to confirm that because you never know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's crazy because like with well now travels kind of starting to get back together and stuff, but before that, like you're like, okay, where is this person? Let me see. Can I, you know, arrange my times? The ones that are most difficult are like cross the world, like trying to get somebody from England or Australia. Those I'm like, I can't do this math. (laughs) Just tell me what time it is there now. And I'll try to (laughs) try to subtract or add my time from there. I had like the, the, uh, world clock converter up once. And I literally was like, okay. And at, and I had like covering the lineup. I'm like at 7 30 p.m your time <laughs> like that yeah it's uh, definitely a struggle. but you know what that's the great thing about technology especially in the covid world is that we can do these kind of things where i mean you're still doing your show um let's get cereal yes, I am. and but you can do it with people in different time zones i mean yeah it's not as fun because you're not interacting with them live and in person but it's still, you get to talk to people from around the world and all of that. But before we talk about Let's Get Cereal, I want to talk more about wrestling and everything yeah. that happened. Because it seemed like you just like expanded and grew in in uh, Southern California there. And you get picked up by NXT, but you were only there for a short, little minute part of time. What yeah. was it like while you were there? I mean, you got to interview like Charlotte Flair, everybody at NXT. I mean, you were, you had to be having a blast, right? Oh my gosh. It was awesome. It was so much fun. Uh, so my role there was actually as a live event host. So I would mm-hmm. go to like all the local live events throughout Florida, um, do, you know, like pre-shows and, and do ring announcing. So like, that was the main part of my job. Mm-hmm. But then every time we did NXT, I would get to do those like WWE exclusive interviews and stuff like that, where I would actually get to like do the backstage segments, which was honestly like my favorite part. It was honestly, it was, it was intense, of course, because it's just like a lot to, to digest (laughs) at Mm -hmm. one time, but I think that could be set for starting any new role. Um, I had a lot of like great support there I learned a whole heck of a ton. So it was honestly a really cool experience. That's awesome. Now, as a ring announcer, I know I've heard like Lillian Garcia talk about when she first started there, were you allowed to have cue cards or absolutely not in NXT as well? no cue cards. Oh man. That's going to be so difficult. No. So it was, uh, it was honestly, that's, I have a really stupidly good memory. Um, That's good at least, but I don't trust it. And that's the worst (laughs) part. It's the worst part to know, like, okay, I know all of the lyrics still to let's get jiggy with it. And I, I, I can't, I can't remember, like, what if I blank out on this? What if I can't remember that, you know? So it's always that what if where I would doubt myself and it's mm. a little comfort of like, I wouldn't even look at my cards when I was doing like the independence unless I was that scared that I was just like staring at them. But um, no, I think it was always a comfort thing of like, oh, but I have them if I need them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 uh, no index cards, no nothing. So when you were at WWE, did you ever have a mess up moment during your ring announcing where you're like a a deer in headlights, basically? I had one. I had one. I I blanked on someone's weight Uh, Uh, (laughs) because I remember seeing them come through. And this was at a live event. And I remember seeing them come through the curtain. And I said, from where, I can't remember who it was. But I was like, from wherever. 
weighing it. And then it somehow I was like, oh my God, girl, get this, get this. So it was just like, to me, it was a very noticeable pause. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I don't know if, if anyone in the audience picked it up, but yeah, it was definitely, but that was the only really one that I remember having where I was like, oh crap. <laughs> yeah, it was just, just the one. So. Well, that's good at least. Cause yeah, I remember yeah. when I started, of course, you know, as a wrestler, well, I started renouncing before I was wrestling. And one of the guys was like, why don't you wrestle? And I was like, Oh, okay. That's a great idea. But anyway, like I would like with, even with my cue cards, like I'd look at it and like put it down just as like a comfort thing, basically, like you would say, and there was still times that I'd be like, um, let me look at that again, because I'm not quite sure I read that correctly or whatever. So yeah, that's always, I had one on the independence where I wrote down the person's, uh, uh, build like the town they were built from, I wrote it down incorrectly. So when I read it off the card, they had actually just gotten in the ring and they like got in my face. Luckily, you know, it worked. Yeah. Um, and I actually, they made me redo it. Oh, that's awesome. They were like, how dare you, you mess up where I was like, Oh my God. And I was like, I was mortified. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's everything like that is just a learning experience of, okay, like I'm going to triple check everything, but I'm also the weirdo that would like research people's entrances ahead of time to make sure oh okay well I know that they're built from xyz you know so yeah I would do the same I wish when I was wrestling I would have thought like because 99.9% of the time I was healed I wish I would have thought when somebody screwed up where I was from that I would get in their face and make them redo it because oh yeah living in Ohio and coming to Montreal I don't know because of the French accent if they can't say Akron Ohio perfectly Cause I get, uh, or even in the States, I would get like acorn Ohio. And I'm like, <laughs> what? It's Akron. Oh, you like, should it's not that hard, guys. Come on. <laughs> How dare but, you? How dare yeah. you call it acorn? But like, I, I never like corrected anybody, but now I'm like, damn, man, I wish I would have thought of that. Cause that would have been good for the character. For sure. Anyway. <laughs> so who was your favorite interview when you were there in at NXT, when you got to do that backstage? It was fun because I remember most of my interviews were <laughs> with Tegan Knox. We, it was always me. It was like, oh, hello again. Oh, hi there. <laughs> um, and she was just a delight. So mm-hmm. I've uh, heard I that about was, her. Oh, yeah. Super delightful. Um, I think one of my favorites, I would say it was probably, it was probably working with Tegan because it was just like super chill. And, and it was really funny because if you ever notice in her WWE exclusives, there was always like a little bit of uh, some kind of office reference. Oh, I never noticed. Yeah. So it's, they were, it was just always kind of like fun to, to do those. So <laughs> that's awesome. I oh, love oh, little And, and um, um, Undisputed Era. Undisputed, Undisputed Era was fun because I only had the one with them, but they like kind of messed with me a little bit, which was I, I always find fun so well yeah I always like the interaction with people as well especially like if you're a heel faction like oh yeah the undisputed era being able to yeah it's good times I'm sure so <laughs> one of the amazing things that like I want to get into with you because I found it completely fascinating before wrestling and all of that you actually are an opera singer oh yeah yeah so <laughs> You I, you went to school for this, right? I did. I have a uh, a degree that says I can sing. Wow. So <laughs> how how does one get a degree in opera singing? Um. So it's a lot of auditioning. Okay. And, uh, and basically, the school I went to um had a vocal performance program where mm-hmm. I got a bachelor's of music de- bachelor's of music degree, and uh, yeah, that was it. I had to do like senior, I had to do recitals and I had to be part of like different choirs. I had to, um, had to do operas every year. Um, and it was like a really interesting and fun, stressful part of my life. (laughs) I I could only imagine like opera singing. I mean, when you think like 2021, we are now, obviously like that's not something you hear all the time. Like Oh yeah, I can, you know, sing opera. Like that's a special talent. Oh, thank you. Um, and, but it's something too, where I think unless like when I was in the world, it just felt Mm -hmm. like that was all there was, you know? So yeah, there were people that would, you know, have subscriptions to opera weekly magazine. And I was like, 
I didn't even know that existed. Same. I'm like, wait, (laughs) I I do this. I should know this. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it was actually a lot more popular and prevalent than I kind of had thought it it, it was at the time. I was in here thinking like, oh, cool. Like nobody sings opera. I'm like, oh, there's a class full of people here that all sing opera. So um, it was really, yeah, it was definitely an enlightening uh, experience. Because like, I mean, I guess uh, like, when I think of like, if somebody's going to be singing opera, I'm thinking they're probably going to Juilliard with the hopes of getting on Broadway. Right. Yeah. I so was like, hoping to like do opera. So I, I was hoping to, um, I, it was funny because after I graduated, I was auditioning more for like young artist programs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is more of another like kind of conservatory environment where mm-hmm you're doing operas and you're studying operas and you're studying language. Studying language was a huge part of that, which I honestly am really grateful for because I still study languages to this day. And I think that that was one of the things that kind of really had me captivated with it. Um, But yeah, it was just like a more intensive program from there. And granted, I didn't get into any of them, but if I had, who knows if I would be doing wrestling commentary now, you know, I might be in Milan. (laughs) What like a crazy like career path change. Like Talk I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, I have a music degree here and I can sing opera, but I'm gonna go do commentary and backstage interviewing and ring announcing for professional wrestling. Like at least I'm still using my voice, I guess. It's, yeah. I think, you know, I think it's how I like tell my parents like, hey, sorry, I'm not singing, but at least I'm using my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Are your parents supportive of you and your yeah. wrestling? Career. super supportive yeah and it's That's funny because awesome. like my my parents have joked about it we're like my dad wasn't super into opera but because I did it he got into it yeah and it's also like my dad's not super into wrestling but because I'll do commentary on shows he'll watch them so like they're yeah. and my mom's actually a pretty big wrestling fan so that's actually awesome <laughs> that's awesome my mom actually like back in the 80s like when I was born like my mom and dad went to WrestleMania three. They went to oh, SummerSlam. Yeah. They did like a, a bunch of stuff. And like when I got into it as a kid, they were like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then as I got older, like I, I was never the person like, oh, I'm going to go to wrestling school and be a wrestler. I didn't even think about that. That wasn't even like in my thought process until it actually all happened. And then my mom was like my biggest supporter. It was like, she never, you know, stopped watching wrestling. She was back into it. She'd watch everything with me I mean she loved it and like she would come when I won my first championship like bigger championship like not just your local thing which was for WSU in New Jersey my mom drove out the night before just so she made sure that she was there because like she wasn't riding with us because there was like six of us in a four-seater car you know what I mean with all of our all of our bags road tripping (laughs) yeah exactly because it was like what an eight-hour drive I think so my mom went the night before got a hotel was all situated and then good job yeah she stayed for the show stayed in the hotel while we you know road warriors of the night drove back I'm like man I should have just stayed with my mom why did you stay with mom (laughs) what you doing I think that's it was so my car that we drove. So I think that's why I ended up going back. So, but whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. So let's talk about Let's Get Serial because you're actually celebrating one year of your relaunch of the show on YouTube. So congratulations first off on that because that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. One year on YouTube <laughs> is hard. It is. I think one of the hardest things was staying consistent with it. Yeah. Uh, luckily, most of this was during the pandemic. So it was, I didn't have much else to do. Um, so I really had no excuses. Uh, but yeah, it was one of those things where as, you know, as soon as my schedule freed up, uh, I was like, well, what am I going to do? Let's bring back, let's get cereal. And I was honestly very lucky to have super supportive friends that were willing to like do zoom interviews with me and just, just chat. So it was really, really awesome. Well, over the course that you've done this, I mean, you've had on some pretty big names. You've had on Brian Cage, Scorpio Sky, Chris Bay, Jimmy Jacobs, Jake Atlas, Allison Danger. I mean, these are not just like your run of the mill people. You know what I mean? They're all very special people. Yeah, they're all very special people. And this is just the list of like people I saw just like fast, like scrolling down your YouTube, just checking it out. Like there's still tons more. Obviously, you've been doing it every week 
for a year plus what you did prior to WWE. It's amazing. Thank you so much. And it's, it's one of those things where I feel very lucky that over the course of like, before I moved out to Orlando, I was very lucky to like make a lot of really good friends within the, the wrestling world and people that I felt I could either just show up to a show with a box of cereal and be like, Hey, you want to go eat cereal? Yeah, let's go. You know, like, <laughs> like some of the times that's how it would happen. Like, yeah. it, uh, with August Gray and, and, and Ava Everett and Angel Sinclair, they were at the show and I was like, Hey, do you guys want to eat cereal with me? And they're like, yeah. Who's going to turn that down? I mean, honestly, I mean, cereal's like the best. Luck- luckily, not many people have turned it down, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, a lot of it was just, it, it became a little more difficult, which is why there are more solo episodes of just me reviewing cereal mm. um, because it, it got a little bit more tricky to coordinate things. Like we had even talked about over yeah. zoom and, you know, working with other people's schedules and, and also it was different when it was like, oh, hey, like I've got the cereal. Here's your bowl. Let me pour to then be like, hey, um, hey, Heather Monroe, do you mind just like buying a box of cereal to eat with me on a video? And yeah. luckily she's super cool. So she was into it. But <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, it was one of those things where it was a learning curve of trying to navigate that. But I'm very, very lucky, and very grateful that it's still going. Well, I'm sure like if I were, for example, to be on your show, there's like, it's crazy because going from one country to another, like I learned, like there's a big difference in foods, even with the border being 45 minutes from where I live, like it's a big difference. And especially with cereal, like there's some cereal you can't get in Canada that you can get in the States. And there's some cereals that are here in Canada that you can't get in the US. And it's like, but guys, we're literally... It's just a line. It's so close. That goes across. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Like one of my big things that I love is sausage gravy and biscuits. And of course that's a Southern thing, but like here in Canada, unless you go to Denny's, which there's not a Denny's near me. Cause I'm in Quebec. Mm-hmm. It's like non-existent. There's no such thing as sausage gravy and biscuits. And I'm just like, I don't, this, it's like the greatest comfort food in the world. Like, I don't understand. But you know, I bet that we don't have like really good poutine here. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, like, I don't think that that's. Definitely. You just got to get the real thing, you know? Yeah. You have to come to Quebec for that. I mean, even Canada, like, no, you have to be in Quebec for oh. poutine. Poutine is a Quebec thing. And also another good thing as we're talking about food, cause I'm a big foodie. Thanks. Another thing. I didn't like it at first when I moved to Montreal. My husband's like, you're going to have to get kicked out because that's just not allowed. Uh It's smoked meat, but it is actually really, really good. Yeah. I don't, I I think it's kind of like pastrami, but I'm not quite sure. Okay. But it is delicious. It's on rye bread and mustard, just like, you know, you would do a pastrami sandwich. So I think it's very close to pastrami, but I hated it when I first moved here. And now I'm like, okay, I get the hype. I get it. It, yeah, I think it's it's one of those acquired tastes, probably. Yeah, but it's, it's good. So anyway, so I have dabbled in Canadian cereals, but I need to I got to get some more. Have you had any of the Timbits ones yet? No, that's next on my list. Oh, so good. I have had the birthday cake one because I love birthday cake flavored everything. Yeah. And it's pretty spectacular. I'm not a big actually. I'm not. That's a big lie. I don't drink coffee at all. So like the mocha ones and stuff like that, I haven't tried, but my husband does like them. So I'm sure they're, they're pretty delicious. I'm going to track that out. I'm going to, I might have to get some imported. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe I could help you out. So you miss all those import fees and stuff like that. You know, I'll do a little, if if you have any American cereals you need, you let me know. We'll do a cereal exchange program. (laughs) My husband has on top of our cabinets, they don't quite go to the ceiling. And he has like a whole, like, I'm going to say at least 20 boxes of cereal. And he only gets like the um, special time only, or, you know, these kind of cereals. So I have like all these boxes of cereal and I'm like, I want that one. No, you can't open that one yet. And I'm like, but why? (laughs) I I remember you told me this. I'm like, he better, he better sacrifice one of them (laughs) for an upcoming episode of let's get cereal. Yeah. Like the one I'm really he wants to do his own YouTube show. I won't go into the whole concept on here, but he wants to do his own, uh, cereal show as well, which I should have him talk to you. And (laughs) he has this one box that he got. He wants to be his 
first episode and I think I told you about this months ago when we first talked about you coming yeah. on and I'm like just open the box of cereal because I want some <laughs> like, I'm sense. dying and it's just sitting there all nice and pristine on top of my cabinet so I'm like come on man give me a break here so tell me what's next for you what's going on in your life well, I have been very lucky to start doing a little bit more commentary again recently. So awesome. I was able to, uh, I did a little guest commentary spot on Mission Pro Wrestling in Texas. I uh, recently, did, recently did WWR Plus uh, up in Worcester, Massachusetts, have some more stuff coming up. So honestly, I'm just trying to get out there again and, and start start calling matches once more, you know, with things opening back up again, a little, I feel like there are more opportunities on the horizon. So yeah, definitely trying to, to, to get myself into some, into some good trouble. <laughs> well, you guys hear that out there. If you're booking somebody for your commentary or reannouncing or backstage interviews, make sure you check out Alyssa and book her because I said so basically Thanks. that's what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. For You're that. definitely welcome. <laughs> Alyssa, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody all of your social media and also where they can catch you on YouTube so that they can subscribe to your channel. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at a Y Y underscore Marino, like a Marino. Uh, and then I have let's get serious up on YouTube. I believe it's youtube.com slash Alyssa Marino. So you can find it on there. And I actually just launched my Patreon. So I have oh. patreon.com slash let's get serial. If you want to be a friend of the show, uh, it's, it's a really great way to get exclusive content and help me pick my serials and you get your name in the credits at, at some of the tiers. So like, let's do that. That's awesome. <laughs> I think that's the best. I love Patreon and the exclusive content that everybody gets to give. And then you get to these like special bonds with everybody because they're, they're basically a part of your show at that point. I love it. And I'm brand new to it. So I'm, I'm trying to let's, let's get some, some patrons going, you know? Yeah, definitely go subscribe. <laughs> Cause I mean, like I said, Patreon is, it's actually, it's like, I guess people don't really understand like, okay, yeah, you're paying a certain amount each month for the content, but like a lot of people don't understand that for content creators like ourselves, that money is going directly back into the show some way or another, whether you're playing for your account where you host things, you know, new cereal boxes for you, you know, 100%. it's, <laughs> it gets crazy. New laptop. I mean, everything programs, it all goes back into the show unless they're really selfish or they have the best stuff already and they just leave it. I don't know. But for us that are, you know, just trying to make a little name for ourselves out there in on Patreon, it definitely every penny helps. So make sure you guys go and check out her Patreon. Check out my Patreon if you're there as well. That would be great. Because Alyssa, I said so. it has been fantastic <laughs> having you on. Thank you so much for coming on Talking Sass. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Oh, definitely. You are welcome anytime, especially when you get some more uh, content going or you yeah. have some big uh, event you want to let us know about. Let me know and we'll get you back on. Yes, ma'am. All right. Until next time, guys.